Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining this week's conversation. I am here with my girl Taylor. Hey guys! And today we had a really special guest, Rich Lander, with Charred Photo. He's a photographer here in Southern California, actually in the same county that I'm in. And uh, we've known Rich for years. He has referred us some of our most amazing weddings that we've ever done. And that's kind of what we wanted to bring to the table today on the conversation was how to become a top referral for wedding photographers. We talk a lot about referrals from wedding planners, but in those early years when you're not really working with wedding planners as much, it's really important to leverage um, the relationships of wedding photographers. We're working with a wedding photographer, you know, every single wedding. And so it's really important to just be a really great team player for them. And Rich talks specifically about what he looks for in a video team um, when referring. And a lot of his tips, I think, could serve all of us very well. But first, before we dive in, I want to ask Taylor, what do you have going on this week in your personal life? Yeah, you know, I um, actually have been putting my head down and nose to the grindstone when it comes to marketing this week. Um, We are mid-February as of the time of recording, which means it's like peak booking season. Um, So I have been just doing all of the things that I know I should be doing, like planner outreach. I'm actually getting coffee with a planner tomorrow. Um, really trying to create some Instagram content and be really good about engagement, just trying to stay top of mind so that I can maximize this booking season for 2023. Um, I just, I don't, I like, my biggest fear is to, after the fact, feel like I could have done more. I never want to feel like I could have done more. I want to always do my very best. So that's (laughs) pretty much taking up my mind um, this week. How about you, Kelly? Yeah, I'll agree. I'll kind of mirror that. I think I'm doing the same thing Um, while we're in the off season. I think it's really important to stay, you know, top of mind, especially now that we're in this booking season and um, you want to, I know for me, I don't know about you, but sometimes here and there, we will have a client ask for a photographer referral. And I have like my four or five go-tos, but if I want to throw like anyone else into the mix, I'll honestly go on my phone and go on Instagram and just kind of see like whose stories are up top and be like, oh yeah, we worked with them last year and we loved it. And you know, this person still exists out here. And so, um, it's just really helpful to, uh, stay top of mind in that Instagram game, um, either through DMS or just visually through posts or stories. So I think that's really smart. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Um, So if you have been lacking in the marketing game, dear listeners, this is your sign to take it up a notch so that you can walk away from 2023 feeling like you did everything you could to get your dream clients. This is the Level Up Podcast. I'm Taylor Petrinovich. And I'm Kelly Gilster of 618 Studios. And we are on a mission to help filmmakers level up their businesses and their craft so they can make more and work less. We want to help you confidently take your business from mainstream to luxury, and it all starts right here. Well, today we have Rich Lander, who is Charred Photo on the podcast. Rich, we are so excited to hear from a photographer and uh, just learn a little bit more about your business and your workflow with videographers. So thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. It's good to see you. So Rich, I think yesterday you just posted that it was your 13th year in business and you actually have us beat. I thought that we were in the business like longer than you, but that's amazing. So I'm the old guy now, and uh, clearly all the all the gray in my beard is starting to show for those that are watching. Um, yeah, so yesterday, uh, which was Valentine's Day, uh, was my 13th year shooting weddings. Um, yeah, I, my first wedding I ever shot was literally like 10 people um, on the beach at noon in the worst light. Um, I had no idea what I was doing. I got paid 300 bucks, and... Um, yeah, it was the scariest day of my life. But um, from there, you know, was able to build a business and, um, you know, make a pretty good lifestyle for myself for the for the next 13 years. So um, yeah, it's been fantastic. That's amazing. I think you have us beat. We did our first wedding for for free, our second wedding for $300. So you had a leg up on us on that one. Taylor, what about you? Wow, I charged eight seventy five. <laughs> oh my gosh, a girl who knows her worth. Wow. Oh yeah. <laughs> to be fair, Definitely. Kelly, I 
I did give them an album as well. So I probably made zero dollars. So yeah, <laughs> we're probably pretty even there. Oh my gosh. I like, you're like, um, looking back, I probably lost money. Good times. <laughs> so now 13 years later, um, what are your collections looking like now? Not $300 anymore, I'm assuming. No, not $300 anymore, thankfully. Um, I mean, pricing-wise, um, I'm between about seventeen five and $20,000, obviously trying to book as much as possible at twenty dollars or more. But, um, you know, there's always trying to make adjustments and trying to, like, level up to the next, um, you know, set of weddings. Um, so it's, there's definitely challenges and like things to like tweak and change, but, um, I think, uh, things are really shaping up for this next season and then for 2024, um, to really be in that market. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. It's hard. It's very different. And I think that's, what's like the challenge is it's basically taking everything I've done for the last 13 years and like flip it upside down on its head and do something totally different, um, to be able to charge, you know, 20, 25, 30. Um, has been an interesting lesson and you know after so long you think you kind of have it figured out and then no not at all Um, so it's it's fun but it's challenging at the same time well that's what keeps it fun right like the ever-changing ways you have to do things yeah Yeah. there's always more to learn oh yeah um how many weddings are you shooting and are you doing local destination what does that look like for you on a typical year so I like to shoot a lot of weddings. Um, on average, I'm doing between 30 and 35. Um, yeah, there were a lot of years that I was doing 40, 44. Um, I probably did that. You know, I was doing 40 plus for probably about six or seven years. Um, and again, I like 30 is like the lowest that I really like to do. Um, and part of that is, you know, I like I like shooting. I'm also single with no kids, so I have tons of time. Um, but also I look at each wedding and engagement session and everything that I'm shooting is like a marketing opportunity to book the next set of weddings. So if I am shooting more, it gives me more to kind of feed my marketing for the next season and the season after that. That's awesome. So you kind of going back to kind of what you said where you're like, oh, it kind of like gets flipped on its head. Like there's so many processes that have changed that I was used to. Can you kind of think off the top of your head, like what are a few of those things that you kind of had to adjust in your workflow to serve that, you know, 20, 25, 30 K client? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think the first thing that really kind of tripped me up was like, I used to have very structured packages um, that were very like, you know, I really spent the time to like psychologically look at how I was selling those packages in order to like book a higher a higher offering that I was, you know, presenting to clients. And then as I'm moving up into, you know, a higher market, it's like, nope, no packages, you know, everything's going through the planner. They want everything totally customized. Um, So like all of those like psychological pricing games that I was playing, um, I don't get to play anymore. You know what I mean? Now it's like, just be as upfront, straightforward as possible, make it super, super clean, super, super easy. Um, and so, you know, there, I'm, I, I actually used to really enjoy like kind of figuring out like, oh, how can I always book my top package or my, my second package? Um, and now it's just like, here's the, pa- here's the, here's the one price that you asked me for. Um, so that's been very, very different. Um, and then just like, um, you know, the amount of weddings or engagement sessions that I'm posting on Instagram it used to be, you know, post every day, post twice a day. I mean, way back in the day. Um, and now it's like, be super strategic, like only show your best of the best of the best, like maybe show 25% of your work. Um, so that's been very different too. Uh, and there's honestly, it's like almost everything that I did in the past is the opposite now. And it's, it's, it's strange for sure, but um, it's nice to learn something new. I think that's so powerful to hear because since most of us are like solo entrepreneurs, we're really running our businesses just like alone in our offices and we think things have to look one way forever and ever and then we're wondering why nothing is changing in our businesses. But I think hearing um, from someone as experienced as you that you've had to change your processes, you've had to change um, the way you do things and your mindset around them in order to get to the next level is really, really empowering. 
to everyone who's listening so that we can all kind of take a step back from what we have typically done and reevaluate and see if it's still serving us or if we need to switch things up. So thanks for sharing that. That was great. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah, change is good. Change is okay. We can ebb and flow with it all. And if we want to make more money, that's how we do it. Um, Okay, so Rich, the main topic of this podcast today is just kind of lifting the veil between the photo video team during the day. So there's like, I just feel like there's in Facebook groups, like I just see all the time this like whole thing about like the photographer being the enemy or the videographer being the enemy and we work so closely together on the wedding day like why are we opponents of each other when we should really be a team so um i think early on in our business maybe taylor as well we really utilized before we had those relationships with planners we utilized building relationships with photographers because we were working with a photographer every single time. We weren't working with a planner every single time in those early years, maybe a venue coordinator. So it was kind of a sure thing for us to know that like we can gain a new relationship on that wedding. Um, So we really tried to make it our best to like be really easy to work with, um, just serve the, serve the photographer too on the wedding day. Um, and so in turn that has turned into, um, a lot of really great opportunities. Rich has referred us some really amazing weddings. We have some really fun ones coming up this year together. And, um, so Rich, I kind of wanted to just pick your brain on your whole thought process behind that and what you look for in a video team when you're referring them. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, it's nice to hear actually your thought process on it for like early on, because I never thought about it in the way of like videographers are always working with a photographer, um, because for photographers, we're not always working with a videographer. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'll be honest, like sometimes, you know, some of these weddings, I'm like, oh, great. I'm so glad there's not a videographer there because it's already so stressful. Um, But, you know, you and I have worked together a lot. And, um, you you know, you guys are the people that I love to refer the most. um, And that's because we really do work as a team on the wedding day. And I don't think we've ever like had strong conversations about it. Like, you know, Hey, let's come together and do all of this. You guys just do show up and, and show up as a team member. Um, One of the biggest things that I always kind of point out uh, that can be frustrating for a photographer on the wedding day is um, the flat light portion of the morning, you know, like we show up and, you know, the photographers are there unloading all their, you know, trinkets and, you know, flat mats and um, things like that to like, you know, create these beautiful flat lays um, that end up ultimately being our responsibility, I guess. And then usually the videographers show up and they're like, cool, can we just like get a quick shot of that when you're done? Meanwhile, they're off shooting the girls getting ready or, um, you know, they're doing robe shots with the girls and, and shooting all of this stuff that we're not able to shoot at the same time because, we're busy working on the flat lays. Um, the thing that I love working with, you know, you, Kelly and Paul um, is Kelly, you're usually down on your hands and knees with me, like adjusting, you know, where's the invitation going to go? You know, is the jewelry okay here? Um, you know, do we need to stack some more um, acrylic blocks underneath this piece? So I know that because you're there, you're not off shooting something that I'm unable to shoot. And then, you know, there's the possibility of like the bride seeing something in her video that I wasn't able to capture because I was shooting something else. Um, the, you know, what kind of ends up happening with us when we work together is like, we both get the same stuff and we both miss the same stuff. And that consistency, I think keeps such a better product for the clients. Um, and same thing going with the second shooters, like Paul is always with my second shooter. Um, they work, you know, side by side, you know, right next to each other, um, capturing the same stuff and working together. So it's almost like they're a team and then we're a team um, instead of like the photographers are a team and the videographers are a team. Does that make sense? It's like almost like we kind of pair off in that way. Um, And a lot of the other video teams that I think we work really well with have a very similar mindset with that. Um, You know, you know, it's even just stupid stuff like helping clean up the stuff from the flat lays. Like, it's such a pain in the butt doing that. And like, we're off to rush to the next thing to like be able to have a videographer there helping us move on to the next step has been super, super nice. Um, And so I I love that. Um, One of the other big things that I think happens is um, 
working with a videographer that is going to shoot while we are shooting. Um, I've run into situations where the videographer, the video team is just standing by waiting for me to, you know, get my shots and then they'll jump in and try to get the same shots, which ends up taking twice as long to get our portraits done, uh, which just doesn't work. Um, Cause there's just not enough time usually. Um, so I love a video team that's like kind of off to the side doing their thing, um, shooting the shots while we're shooting. And that way I can turn around and say, hey, did you guys get what you need? Hopefully they say yes. Um, if they say no, awesome, great, step in, grab your shot, and then we can move forward. But more often than not, they're saying yes, um, that they did get their shot. And I try to keep a lot of movement while I'm shooting. So that way I'm like really paying attention to like, oh, okay, we need some content for video. It also helps keep the clients comfortable and in a good like flow state as well. So it works out, you know, in two ways, but um, I want to make sure the video team is getting what they need, but I don't want to have to keep stopping constantly if they're not shooting what we're shooting. Yeah. We had Sam Ng on the podcast a few weeks ago and he actually brought up that same point. He's like, I'm not, I'm not shooting anything that the photographer is not shooting. I know that you love working with Sam as well. He has the same mindset. And um, I guess it's just kind of come naturally over the course of the, those years to know that like it would be, it would do the photographer a disservice to like be shooting moments that they weren't able to be there for and vice versa. Because then the bride is thinking like, wait, where was the photographer? Why didn't it get still images of that? Or like vice versa for video. And so, yeah, just, you know, maintaining that united front together. Like I said, we work so closely together. Um, there's a lot of things that we have to troubleshoot together on the wedding day. And so like, if we're not on the same team, that just makes those troubleshooting things so much harder. So, um, yeah, I loved what you said. It, yeah, you got, it is true. Like you don't always have to work with a video team. And, and I don't blame you when you say that, like it, I can see how like it's easier to just like have your flow, not have to worry about the videographer on those weddings where a videographer isn't there. Um, and it's kind of a bummer that like, that is the, uh, reputation that like our side of the industry has created for itself. And I think that, you know, we're aiming to be better, but, um, yeah, just kind of hearing that from photographers where it's like, if you're going to have a videographer there, make sure that they're blending in with the process and joining the team, not like, a you know, a squeaky wheel that's going to cause everything to crumble. So and if you think about it from like the client's perspective, it's a better client experience too. Like they don't want to have to do robe shots twice, et cetera. You know, like they want to get in and get out the same way we do. Like they want to enjoy their day and not have it be like a total production. So um, I think it's better for everybody. And for videographers who are listening, if that is not your process, I would definitely consider just teaming up with a photographer, if not just for the photographer's sake, for your client's sake too. So you make it so much easier on yourself when you just kind of like sit back and let the photographer, like they know that they, I've always kind of on like a pyramid, right? I've always placed the photographer higher on the pyramid than us. And that's just how like, that was my mindset from the very beginning is that like, generally the, the spend on the wedding photographer is higher than video. So in my mind, that means that like the value of what they're getting, like they're valuing the photography there, they're valuing us too. But like, I've also just found that it makes my job so much easier when I can just like sit back and let the photographer um, direct as they'd like to direct and go through their workflow. Um, and that's totally fine. Like that's, that's my place. Like if, if the photographer asks me if I need anything, I would like, you know, try to be as quick as possible, jump in where I can and direct just slightly. But um, yeah, I think that we all can really lean on photographers a little bit more rather than, you know, butting heads in allowing our workflow to be easier, just like we're making their workflow easier too. Yeah. I think, I think that is the challenge sometimes is like when a video team walks in with like specific shots that they have in mind, cause they do it for every single wedding. Um, maybe they're obsessed about like one little hand movement or something that they can constantly have to use. Um, and it's like, they're trying to fit that in or they're kind of forcing that into the posing flow that the photographer is already kind of creating versus just like sitting back and letting things naturally happen. Um, I think that's where things become a little difficult and tricky because, you know, 
our perspective, at least as a, as a photographer, it's like, we're having to get great shots. Duh. But like, it's also managing and maintaining like the couple's emotion and their connection with each other, with you, and then making sure that video is also getting something they can capture as well. Um, you know, if, if you look at the totem pole in that, in that way, um, I, you know, I do look at it that way sometimes. And I also, I'm like, okay, if that's the case, then I feel a responsibility to the videographers to give them content that they can use. If my expectation is for you guys to be shooting while I'm shooting, then I better give you something. You know what I mean? Um, and so I think like walking into that as a photographer um, helps out a lot because it's just like, okay, I if I want you to act a certain way, then I need to like, make that happen i need to give you enough so that you don't have to step in every 10 seconds and cut me off and do your own pose do you know what i mean and you're so good about the flow like i just feel like there's there's very few photographers that utilize movement within like it's not so stiff and so like for me it's just like a no-brainer whenever you're like oh the photographer or like this video team like wanted to totally take them on like the whole different side of the venue to go do something like if you're a videographer listening, like, please don't do that. There's just no time for that. Um, I don't know. I just, I, I've just really, truly n- never understood the, you know, the dynamic where photographers are like in our way or whatever. Like, sure, sure. I have encountered the photographer that wants to shoot the whole ceremony on a 35 millimeter. That's a bummer. Um, but I think also actually going back to like lenses, I think that it's really important um, to align your lens choices with what the photographer is using throughout the wedding day. That's huge. It's really, I love shooting with my 50 millimeter pretty much 90% of the day. It's, it is a little bit different when I work with a photographer whose primary choice in a lens is a 35 millimeter because it already just like causes a little bit of like differences and like where they're standing, where I'm standing and all that. So now if I see that, I'll just go ahead and like pop on my 35 millimeter so that we're like side by side next to each other. No one's in anyone's way. Um, so I don't know if you guys are listening, I think that that's a really smart move is to just, I just kind of check in with a photographer and just say, Hey, what lens are you shooting on? And then mirror that on your camera too. Yeah, that's, so I, that's huge for me. Cause, um, I have a horror story from years and years ago. Um, where I was shooting definitely like the biggest wedding of my life at that time. Um, and it was one of those weddings that, you know, I walked in and, and it was like, Hey, like, just so you know, like this will be on the cover of the knot, um, no pressure, um, do your best. And you have to shoot all of these 8 million things. And, um, the video team that they had hired, they weren't wedding videographers. Mm. They were snowboarding videographers. Right. Um, so you have to imagine the kinds of lenses that you use when you're, you know, videoing snowboarding is way wider lenses. So they were actually using like a 16 millimeter, like the most, like the majority of the day. Whoa. And the guy kept getting so pissed at me. because like, dude, you're in my shot. Dude, you're in my shot. I'm like, everything's in your shot. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like, at one point I'm like, I, I, I'm like, here's a 135, like, get on this because I can't get anything without being in your shot and I need to get these shots. Um, And it got heated for sure, but it it was one of those things where it's like, you have to be able to kind of have a variety of different lenses to serve the different parts of the day. Um, And it's not like you need to be on a 135 millimeter all day long, but there's certainly moments where, um, you know, it's helpful. I, I shoot on my 50 the majority of the day um, so I think that tends to work well because I, I don't know anything about video, but I assume, um, most video teams are shooting on a 50 or longer, um, a lot of the times. Um, so that's worked out well, but I think like you said, Kelly, just checking in once in a while. Um, and I do the same thing, like, especially for the, the ceremony and things like that, um, where you guys have a lot of tripod set up. I want to figure out what lens you're on so that I can also be out of your way, um, so, you know, if, if somebody says they are shooting on something a little bit wider, I just need to know where to stand and um, where I can still get my shot, but not ruin yours as well, you know? Yeah. So I think it'd be really cool if videographers who are like three years in, this is like almost a wake up call. Um, 
in two ways. Number one, for them to realize what they're doing wrong. Um, and number two, to realize ways they can like maximize that relationship. Like, um, <clears throat> do you know Larissa Cleveland? Like I did an editorial with her, oh my, oh, two years ago. And um, I was like, holding the diffuser. I don't know. I was like doing whatever we could. And she was like, this is like, no, like nobody ever, ever, do, ever does this. Like, yeah, you're the best. Like, you know what I mean? Um, so just, I don't know, things like that, I guess. Um, I think so many people are so like in their craft, like blinders on that they forget that like there's other people doing their jobs too, <laughs> you know? Well, it's so true because like as photographers, like our main referral source is going to be the planner or, you know, the bride herself giving us referrals, right? So, you know, we work our tails off to like, please both of those people. But then videographers also have, you know, those two, those two referral sources, but they also get a lot of referrals from photographers. So it's like, mm -hmm. can you help us in any way so that we feel like we've got an awesome team player and that we're just like, like itching to refer you? You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. Like I have three people on my referral list and that's it. And Taylor, I'm sure once we work together, you'll be on it. Uh -oh. uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, Kelly and Paul and then, and then Sam Ang are like two of those people because it's, I know that if I ask them for something, it's as if I'm asking my second shooter and I'm not asking for crazy things, but it's just like, there's no attitude. There's no questioning. It's just like, oh yeah, let me go grab that really quick for you. Um, and vice versa, you know what I mean? Like we always try to grab like an extra bag because you guys always have so much junk with you, junk gear, <laughs> so equipment. Yeah. Um, it is junk, it is. It's, it's very expensive junk. <laughs> um, you guys always have so much gear with you that it's like, okay, can I help you like get this to your car? Um, and it is about that. And then getting to work with the same people over and over again, you just develop that friendship. And like, I mean, Kelly's, like somebody I text almost every day, usually some stupid meme or some dumb some TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But it's like, it helps on the wedding day where it's like, cool. Like we just know each other um, really well. And I think part of that is just like the trust is there. And then it helps us, you know, it helps me to refer, you know, these great video teams. And then um, on the wedding day, it's just like, I know, I know what to expect from them. They know what to expect from me. And there's just really like, there's no friction there. It's, it's so nice. It's as if working without a videographer. Yeah. And also okay, like you have to, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it's also <laughs> important to understand that like, you know, with these photographers putting your name out there as a referral, like they're putting kind of their own business on the line in the eyes of the planner or the client like if the planner is like, hey, Rich, I don't really have a video team. Who would you recommend? Like, it's really important that they have complete confidence in you because like what a bummer would it be if he referred, say, us to wedding planner and then we were just a mess on the wedding day. And then the planner is like, Rich, who are these people? Like you said they were great. Or the or the client is like, wait, my photographer said this, this team was great. They're stressful on the wedding day. They're bossing us around. You know, who knows? But, you know, it's just having those referrals are so valuable. And, you know, when you do gain a referral from a wedding photographer, um, just don't take it lightly. Just know that it's a huge honor. Live up to that referral and just go above and beyond on the wedding day. Just things like holding a diffuser or helping with cleanup after the flat lay. Um, even things like maybe the bride and groom decided they wanted to do like a big family group shot and the photographer's like crap I don't have an I don't have a lens for this and it's like hey here's a 16 to 35 but just like grab it out of my bag you can use this so just like little things like that that just make the wedding day the wedding days are stressful but we can make it less stressful together well said Kelly yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think the other thing though like the other thing for sure is um like the way videographers show up and the way that they dress. Oh my gosh. Yep. And you know, it, it's, it's challenging from a photographer's perspective sometimes because guests just see a camera, right? So they get us confused all the time. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of videographers that complain that like, 
guests walked up to them and asked for a photo, um, not knowing that the, it's a video camera rolling. Um, but that just shows that like, it looks like they're also the photographers. And so, you know, if a video team is showing up like in a polo shirt and cargo shorts, which has a hundred percent happened, um, then it makes the photo team look bad. And then it's like, I don't want to refer them. Yeah. The guests think that you're all one team. You know, I can't tell you how many times we've been like, oh, they're like, how many photographers are there of you guys? You're all, and I'm like, oh, it's two separate teams, two videographers, two photographers. And then they're like, oh, okay. But yeah, that's so Sometimes true. it's the like, bride and groom. Sometimes the bride and groom don't even know that we're separate teams <laughs> because they haven't been involved in the planning as much uh, because they have, you know, really high end planner. Um, yeah. But like, yeah, it's so you really do want to like be able to mesh really well, um, you know, in the way that you appear as well. Right. So this is another thing I kind of, this is past the wedding day. Another way that I think that us videographers can really serve our photographers is on when, on delivery times. So I can't tell you how, and vice versa, I can't tell you how stressed I am when the photographer is turning around their images in like two weeks. And I'm over here with like not, I mean, I have like an eight to 12 week, I'm kind of delivering more around the 10 to 12 week time frame. So it's not like I'm like delivering like crazy fast or anything like that. But when the photographer turns around and does that, I'm like, shoot, I look so bad now and vice versa. I think that like, you know, as video, we have a lot of editing to do. Um, and so I think that like, it's really important to, to like, kind of chat it up with the photographer on the wedding day just to see like what their timeline kind of looks like. Um, once you've kind of gotten to that level where you could be comfortable with each other on like, hey, when do you usually deliver? Maybe over dinner or something. And kind of trying to align your delivery time similarly so that um, no one's feeling like totally gypped. Like Rich, I'm sure you've had the experience where like the videographer like has turned it around in a couple weeks and you're like, cool, I look like a jerk now. <laughs> It's, it's so true. Um, especially like the amount of weddings that I do shoot, like my backlog is definitely, um, a bit bigger. Um, yeah, I'm usually kind of 10 to 12, 14 weeks, um, to turn stuff around. So yeah, if the video team's delivering at like six weeks, four weeks, two weeks, um, yeah, I look terrible. Um, I love that. Like I have, you know, video teams that I can text with and be like, Hey, like, I'm running a bit behind. How are you doing on so-and-so's edits? Um, and that way we can at least align it so that maybe we're a week off from each other um, or 10 days. You know, we don't have to deliver on the same day, but like if we get in the same time frame, I think it helps so much. Um, and so it makes both of us look good. And I think it also kind of extends that like excitement of receiving um, your products from both teams. Um, I think it elevates that and extends that over maybe a week or two week period of time. Um, and so it just gives a better experience for the clients. Yeah, that's a great point. Actually, I had never thought about that. So I learned something today. <laughs> yeah, just it just kind of like extends that united front past the wedding day to be like, hey, I'm on the same team as you. Like we just sometimes like wedding days feel like you just went to battle together. So you're like, hey, war buddy, I'm delivering yeah. now. When are you delivering? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's usually a, a war filled day and then we go to Taco Bell afterwards and, and talk all about it, you know? Yeah. Decompress over a bean and cheese burrito and a crud trap supreme. <laughs> For sure. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yes. I don't think Taylor knows that we're like avid Taco Bell eaters. Oh, oh, that hasn't been introduced into the podcast. Oh my gosh. No. <laughs> you're like, I'm like, you're like an in and out person. <laughs> I love in and out. <laughs> you too, but the line is just too long after That's a true. wedding day. Yeah. You know, and it's like, it's like twice as expensive. <laughs> Taco Bell's so expensive now. It is. It really oh, is. I have not yeah. been since oh probably high school. <laughs> I don't oh know. my God. It's like, <laughs> I can't get out of there for less than 20 bucks. I remember back in my day in high school, you could get the bean and cheese burrito. Sorry guys that are listening. We're going to go on a, <laughs> yeah. on a side tangent. The bean and cheese burrito was like 79 cents. And I think it mm -hmm. now it's like, I don't know, someone, anyone who listening, you can like fact check me, but I think it's like over $2 now. It's something ridiculous. Mm. I'm not, yeah, I'm not going to lie. Um, oh my goodness. Yeah. So we, I, I used to be in and out after the wedding and I have slowly converted to Taco Bell. Mm -hmm. Love so, to see it. Highly Love to recommend. see it. Yeah. We'll get you on board, Taylor. Sounds good. <laughs> 
Oh man. Well, okay. So we do have primarily filmmaker listeners. Is there anything else if you were, let's say somebody who's listening is going to be the next video team you work with. What would you say? Please do this. Please don't do this. It would make the day so much better. <laughs> um, gosh, just be normal. <laughs> <laughs> be normal. Totally. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, um, there's no, like, I don't know. I think for, I, I think photographers show up and we want to give every video team like the benefit of the doubt. Um, what's weird is I think the biggest red flag for me is when the video team emails me before the wedding and says, hey, can we chat? Oh, no. And I think that was a popular thing that might have like gone around in the Facebook forums like a couple of years ago as like, you know, hey, if you want to get on the right team with the video or with the photo photographers, email them and just touch base with them beforehand. For me, that just means like, oh, you don't know what you're doing. So like, just show up on the wedding day, be cool, be normal. Um, hey, can I help with anything? Um, and then, you know, just like, really like think about if you were working on like if you were working for the photographer you're not obviously but just like go into the mindset of like what would they need what can i help with how can i be of support and that way it lets us do our job effectively and then give you guys great content and great space to work with and um really helps overall as a you know create a team environment because you know we want you guys to succeed just as well as we want to for ourselves uh, it's not a, it doesn't need to be a battle. Um, you know, we've, I think we've all had hard wedding days. Um, but like, it so doesn't need to be like that. And I don't think anybody wants it to be that. So just like show up and be cool. Um, that's really it. like, just be nice. <laughs> I want to get you a shirt that says show up and be cool. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a hat, you know? Oh, a hat. Yeah. <laughs> Always yeah, a hat. Yeah, more. yeah, yeah. That's cool. Even better. Yeah, I feel like from the very beginning, I've always just felt like with the whole stigma, photo video stigma, it's just if we're battling together, the only person that we're hurting is the client. So like it's we each all have 30 more weddings to perform our best at, but we're there for that client. We want to perform our best to deliver the best images, the best content, footage, all the stuff for them. And so if we're looking at it from that team you know, team aspect that we're there for the client, we're going to work together for the client, then like all that stuff is going to fall in place. So let's show up. Let's be cool. Let's be nice. Well, Rich, you're obviously a wealth of knowledge and I'm sure there's a ton of photographers who want to learn from you, but I'm sure there's filmmakers out there who would also really love some of your insight. Um, do you have anything that you are offering the wedding or creative community? Yeah. So I actually I do teach um, workshops a couple times a year um, for photographers. Um, and then I also do mentor sessions throughout the year, um, you know, usually just a one or two hour phone call um, to answer whatever questions that I can about, you know, photography or running your business or marketing yourselves. Um, really anything. I'm an open book. Um, there's really nothing that I will not answer, honestly, on those calls. Um, so yeah, I offer those throughout the year. Um, and then you just literally jump on my website, shoot me an email um, at chargephoto.com or on Instagram at chargephoto. Super easy. Thank you for joining us in this conversation. If you enjoyed this episode, please help us reach more filmmakers just like you by taking a screenshot and sharing it on social media. Don't forget to tag us at The Level Up Co. And join us again next week. Same time, same place, as we continue to level up the industry together.